What's going on, guys? Welcome back to another interview edition of Learn Crypto. My name is Nick Hellman, aka Crypto Hitman. Here with me today is Mr. Black from Bermuda, a next generation D app. Take back your privacy. How are you doing today? Great. Thanks for thanks for having me on board today, Nick. Really appreciate it. Happy uh, to be able to squeeze into your busy schedule. I know you guys got a lot coming, and hopefully we can talk about some of those things in this video. Now, before we dig into this, I want to uh, take this video another level up and give you guys a chance to win 500 BMDA tokens. Simply like this video, subscribe to the channel, and leave your ERC20 address in the comment section below. Also, for a chance to win an additional 500 BMDA tokens, this is for all current and new members at patreon.com slash learn crypto. If you sign up today, you do get a chance to win 500 Bermuda tokens at patreon.com slash learn crypto. So let's dive right into this. Let's make it simple. You can probably explain the product and the project better than me. So if you just want to start with a quick, you know, 1000 foot view elevator pitch of Bermuda. Yeah, sure. Absolutely. So Bermuda is a legally compliant DeFi privacy solution that provides wallet obfuscation when sending ERC-20 tokens to other wallets to prevent the recipient from being able to view your holdings or knowing where those tokens have come from. Uh, we launched the Bermuda token back in December, and we launched the first version of our app in mid-January. Uh, looking at our tokenomics, we're a, a double deflationary token with 0% buys and a 5% sell tax. Um, and at present, anyone that holds over $1,000 worth of the BMDA token gets completely free use to the app. Uh, if you're not holding uh, 1000 token, sorry, $1,000 worth of tokens, you can still use the app. Uh, there's just a 2.5% a service, service fee that's, that's applicable on those transactions. So, I mean, in, in essence, essentially what Bermuda does is it just operates as a privacy layer when you're interacting with within DeFi or you're wanting to send tokens, you're wanting to hold tokens, et cetera. It just provides you with a layer of privacy um, when you're, you know, interacting on the blockchain. And there's a lot of good use cases for that and some successful projects in the space. You know, one that comes to mind is Torcado, Tornado Cash, which had a massive success, but we do know they're having some regulatory issues and some legal issues. Um, how have you guys created a competitive product in the privacy sector for crypto, but you're kind of avoiding some of these legal issues that might arise in the future? Yeah, look, I, I think you hit the nail on the head. Tornado Cash was in, incredibly successful, and it's it's uh, obviously the their demise was sent some pretty massive waves through the the crypto community. I'm, I'm I'm sure a lot of people remember the the whole kind of concept of criminalizing code and the hashtags that came out of that when Tornado Cash got sanctioned. So. Um, after Tornado Cash went down, our, our kind of our, our kind of thought process with Bermuda was really focusing on the legal legal uh, legal compliance side of it in terms of how can we do something that effectively offers the same service, but in a way that's um, a lot more flexible to the user. Um, for those that use Tornado Cash, you would know it was a fairly rigid system and and, and limited in its functionality, if that makes sense. Albeit it provided amazing privacy, but it was it was fairly rigid in the way that it operated. Uh, and the second thing was obviously how can we how can we do it in a way that's going to be sustainable long term where we're not going to get shut down so we've implemented a completely different workflow to what tornado cash uh, operated on they operated on on zero knowledge proofs and and private keys on on redemption of funds and things like that so we've implemented what we call a web 3 web 2 hybrid model where we still do all of our signing verification security all that side of things on the web 3 layer but then we have a web two layer that sits in the background. And essentially what the web two layer does is it, from a legal compliance standpoint, it records the break in the chain, so to speak, that we store uh, in a private ledger in the background. And so essentially what that means for us is that um, if, you know, someone wanted to use our service for illegal purposes or, or things like that, we have some control in the system and some oversight so that if we ever got hit with a warrant or a subpoena or something like that, we're able to provide that information to law enforcement agencies. Um, and that's the big thing that they're looking for. They're looking for um, these kind of projects actually having accountability and saying, you know what, we, we are actually recording some basic level information about these transactions. We don't mm -hmm. make it available to the public. So it's, it's, it's for your average legal everyday user they'll have pretty much the exact same experience as tornado cash they'll get the same benefit of of that anonymity um but for people that are you know wanting to use these services for illegal purposes or to you know 
try and launder money and things like that. We've just kind of got that safeguard for us and that the safeguard in the background that it ever means that if a law enforcement agency ever came to us and said, look, we're aware that this war what this wallet address has been involved in, in criminal activity, that we're able to provide them that information on those transactions so that instead of going after us, they can actually go after the people that have, have committed right. the crime, so to speak. Makes sense. You know, I, I think a lot of people hear privacy in the crypto space and they're like, oh, this is best used for nefarious actions. But I think it's a lot less of crypto transactions are nefarious than the mo mainstream media would want you to believe. I've seen data around that as well. And uh, I think there's a lot of use cases for even an average Joe like yourself or me would want to use uh, the application that you guys have created, not really want just everybody to know your wallet addresses, not have everybody be able to track all your wallet addresses, track all your trades, track all your holdings. So, I mean, am I missing out on anything here? Like what are some of the main uh, use cases of the product that you're creating and the, and the product that you're looking to create moving forward? Look, you again, you, you're exactly right. So the, the last figures that I saw, um, I don't know how accurate these were, but these seem to be what was commonly um, commonly uh, published by most of most of the kind of sources said that 66% uh, of transactions that were done through Tornado Cash were perfectly legal. Now, obviously, the flip side of that is that, you know, 34% were illegal, which is a huge number or, given the volume that was put through the service. Potentially yeah, illegal, exactly. Yeah. Um, but even in saying that, as I said, I, I choose to see that on the flip side, that there's 66% of people of that volume, and there were billions of dollars put through Tornado Cash, 66% were supposedly done for perfectly legal transactions, which is a huge market. And so we're going after the 66% and leaving the 34% to you know other people that are, don't care about compliance, if that makes sense. Yeah. Um, and there's definitely have, a lot of... If you have 66% of the success of Tornado Cash before they got shut down, I think you would be pretty happy. I think community members would be happy. And I think BMDA token holders would be happy as well. Oh, look, absolutely. Uh, and and as you said, there are plenty of use cases for perfectly legitimate um, privacy or anonymity in, in, in crypto. And the thing that's been interesting for us is that we've seen a lot of extra use cases that we weren't necessarily expecting when we first launched this product. So for example, we've had companies approach us that um, have kind of said, Hey, look, I run my payroll in crypto. Like, could I use this service as to, you know, basically go through and pay all my staff because I don't want them really seeing the company holdings because they're just going to nag me for a raise constantly. If they see what our holdings are, can I use this for, you know, some anonymity there to be able to pay my staff? And yeah, absolutely. The other big use case that we've, we've, we've found is, is actually people like yourself, Nick, we've been amazed at how many influencers and promoters have actually engaged with us where they they might be running competitions, for example, for example, in giveaways, like you, you, you mentioned at the start of this, uh, call where they 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 like to be able to pay out um, their different you know promotion winners and things like that and again they don't want their wallet addresses shown so we've had a a huge amount of influencers come on board that have started running all of their promotions and things like that through through Bermuda but again just for everyday users um, it gives you the ability to be able to send tokens you might be sending tokens to someone you might you may not know which is obviously very common in crypto. Um, or you might just be paying for something and you don't want people to have access to know where those funds came from and be able to look up your own personal holdings. The other use case as well is that it allows you to be able to hold tokens anonymously as well. It's not just about the transfer. It's, it's actually about being able to hold them. So, um, and this is probably going to lead into one of your future questions, but one of the big things for us is um, we're, for, first and foremost, we're a DeFi project and that's really the area that we're focusing on. Um, and so, we're looking at how we can partner with other DeFi projects um, and other DeFi tokens to support those other tokens to, you know, obviously expand our, our offering to, to different users. So um, at present, I think we're supporting 12 different tokens or 13 different tokens now, I'd have to check, but, um, and we, we, we're, we're bringing on new tokens at least once a week, um, if not twice a week, which we're what we're doing at the moment. So we're supporting Vault, Colt, uh, Shiba, uh, Shido, Alcazar, um, obviously your main ones like ETH, USDC, USDT. Um, but the the big benefit of Bermuda is is that we can work with any DeFi token that we want to, any ERC20 token that we want to, we can support that. And so it's been a real community driven project in the sense mm -hmm. that um, we're allowing, we're constantly, um, you know, obviously allowing requests to take place within our community as to what tokens they'd like to see supported in the system. And that's probably one of the big things that separates us from nearly all of our competition, the fact that we can support any tokens that we want to. 
Yeah, that's really awesome. That does lead to my, one of my next questions before I get to that, though, is, yeah, what really caught my interest with Bermuda is the fact that um, influencers or people like myself where I'm sending transactions either for freelance work or giveaways or competitions or sending and receiving uh, tokens from from projects to do giveaways on the behalf or interviews or whatever it may be. There's a lot of things in crypto uh, that is paid in crypto. And just to be able to shield some of my wallet addresses, obviously, you know, most people have a bunch of them, but you kind of want to shield those and not even allow people to have the opportunity to kind of try to trace everything you're doing. Not that influencers are doing anything illegal or I'm doing anything illegal, but it's just like you wouldn't want somebody to be able to see all of your transfers in, in your bank accounts. So why would you want them to see it in your crypto wallets? So yeah, the giveaway that I did mention, simply like and subscribe, leave your leave a comment in the comment section below with your ERC20 wallet address. I am planning on using and improving, validating the Bermuda platform by giving away the 500 BMD A tokens via their platform. So it'll be a really exciting exercise to put the product on showcase and uh, allow the winners to simply get the tokens directly to the wallet address without seeing my wallet address that holds my BMD A tokens. Also, there'll be another 500 BMD A giveaway for any current or future members of patreon.com slash learn crypto. So make sure to join over there for your chance to win. Essentially, if you win, you get two months of uh, subscription completely free. So exciting times for sure. And that kind of leads me to the next question is, it seems like you guys have a great product for the space. You've thought about the legal ramifications of privacy and, and trying to avoid the pitfalls of Tornado Cash, try to capture that 66% of the market share that they had, bring it over to Bermuda. But how are you really going to get user acquisition? And what is the strategy there? It kind of sounds like you're already talking a little bit about bringing on uh, tokens and coins that have good cult followings or good active communities, trying to add them to your platform and getting them to use it. Uh, but is there any other things that you guys are, are coming up with soon or new product updates, white paper updates, along with new communities uh, that you're looking to onboard? Yeah, definitely. Um, I suppose the only other the other use case that I'll, I'll just mention that I, I probably should have mentioned before, looking at um, when we're listing these, these tokens as well, and, and we're, we're actually partnering up with these projects. So in the case of like uh, Cleese, a good example, and, and Vault, which we just um, took live last night, we're actually partnering up with, with these projects and, and, and same with Alcazar. And what these projects have actually done for us, because they've seen the benefit in what we're doing for their users, um, they've actually whitelisted our contract address for, for the DAP as well. Um, and one of the big things that allows people to do, just in terms of looking at use case and adoption, uh, CLE, uh, as I said, CLE, um, Vault and, and Alcazar, for example, all have um, sell taxes and buy taxes and things like transfer taxes in their tokenomics. The fact that they've whitelisted our contract address actually allows BMDA to be utilized as a service in DeFi that allows people to be able to move that those holdings from one wallet to another without incurring a lot of those transfer taxes wow. as well. So it's it's a huge thing for those communities in terms of supporting those communities. And as I said, this it has to happen on a project level. Like we have to engage with the core team in order to and have those discussions in order for these things to occur. But it, it provides huge, they can see it as an as as a bit of a safe way for them to be able to provide a transfer mechanism to their communities without incurring so much tax. Mm -hmm. um, and we're just, as I said, we're very grateful that these communities have placed and, and these projects have pl placed that trust with us um, to put us in a position to be able to do that for their holders, because it obviously provides a huge amount of benefit to them. Yeah, because I but, mean, the, the reason the tax is created on a lot of those projects is really to, uh, A, it kind of gives a runway to the projects, but also kind of the punish in the way sellers and traders of, of the asset, not really to punish your diehard users who are, who are just looking to utilize your token in another way, whether it's paying for a service, paying for an item, doing a giveaway, whatever it may be. So it sounds like the whitelisting of Bermuda uh, within those platforms and for those tokens allows their holders to uh, do some of those things without getting that penalty of the tax Ex for selling. Because exactly they're right. not really and selling, they're just doing other things with it, you know? And it could be something, it could be as simple as, um, I'm, like, I'm sure you can relate to this, Nick, because I know that I've heard this from a lot of influencers and people that are kind of big in the crypto space. You kind of get to a point where, whether you like it or not, if, if you're, if you're, if you've got a name in crypto, you start getting copy traders and you start mm -hmm. getting people that, that are just watching every microtransaction on your wallet, for example, because they want to know exactly what you're doing, where you're moving things around. And, and you know, it's it's, it's like that guy that has, a, uh, has the Twitter account to, to, to track Elon Musk's plane. Right. You know? It's like that. you kind of see that a lot in crypto. And 
Um, essentially, what this allows you to do is you could be, you know, you could, it could just be a case of, you know what, I just, I need a new wallet or something like that. And I want to be able to send tokens, move tokens to that wallet or store tokens in a way that stops people from being able to, to track every single move that I'm doing. Um, and so Bermuda essentially allows you to do that. It gives you that layer of anonymity. You can either hold the tokens within your Bermuda wallet and no one can see what you're doing. Or alternatively, you could use it, that, use the platform as a mechanism to send out to a new fresh clean wallet without people being able to know where that new wallet is as well awesome. looking towards the looking towards the future we have some really really big things in the works at the moment that are getting released uh the plan is the the the, the date at the moment is is mid-March, however, uh, 15th of March. However, I will say that um, as of yesterday, we are slightly ahead of schedule, which is obviously wow. always nice. Surprising software. Software yeah. never knows this plan. <laughs> <laughs> Look, we're, we're really a, um, we're really, we're a completely internal dev team, which is obviously huge, a huge benefit to, to the project itself. But we're really a kind of deliver first uh, kind of mentality around everything that we we do as well. So we we really focus on on trying to do the big releases and do the big announcements before we try and hype things up too much. So it's like if we announce something, we we announce it because we know that we've you know we've got a date that we're going to be able to 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 hit. Moving towards the future and and looking at what's coming in that next model, we're moving ourselves slightly away from the kind of conventional privacy mixer and more into what we're calling a privacy wallet or a privacy ecosystem, if that makes sense. And so what we're introducing to the platform is a, a built-in um, privacy DEX into your, the actual user's wallet itself. So essentially what that will mean is that you can hold tokens within your Bermuda account. And then at any stage, you can swap, sell, buy, whatever you want to do with those tokens to a different token that we support, um, which, and every one of those trades is completely anonymous. There's, there's literally no way to track it because it happens on a contract level internally within the app. So it basically means that you could deposit ETH into it, and then you could swap that for any of our supported tokens whatsoever and hold them on a long-term basis. And is the liquidity, is the liquidity being driven from other big name Dex is it just putting that privacy shield over the top of it? Like it'd be, yeah, to oh, yeah, it's, 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 it's a, Exactly, it's it's a proxy dex that we we operate through an Perfect. integration with Uniswap, and and we're looking at Pancake Swap as well. So, awesome. um, it's those are it, the it, yeah, oper- dexes. Those are the that's, two that's exactly dexes, so. that, that's exactly right. I mean, and to be honest, this is ninety percent ninety percent of people that release their own dex. This is the way that they do it. If you look at the underlying technology, it's just a proxy dex in the background, um, which is the best way to do it because otherwise it means that we have to you know hold liquidity and it becomes complicated and things like that. You're much better just to you know, connect with either Uniswap or PancakeSwap and, and and not reinvent the wheel, if that makes sense. Mm-hmm. The main point of it, though, is the fact that because we're making those trades on a contract level, every one of those trades is completely anon- is com- has the anonymity there and the privacy there. So it, it, uh, it, it allows people to be able to utilize Bermuda as more of a long-term hold platform rather than just looking at it purely as a transfer mechanism. Um, we obviously still have some great functions, functionality in terms of that transfer mechanism. So one of the other things we're releasing is, is a swap and send function, which basically means that when you are sending tokens out of the system, you can um, nominate to choose an alternative token to send out. So it will... Wow. It will use the tokens that you have, but it'll send a different token to whatever the destination wallet address is. So we are still obviously looking at how we can optimize that transfer um, mechanism as much as possible and, and just create as much anonymity and privacy for users as possible. Every time we release one of these features, for example, it's creating additional layers of obfuscation on those transactions. Mm-hmm. Um, and a, a core mixer in itself, just in its basic form, relies very heavily on volume. Every time we re, re, uh, release bits of functionality like this, it takes a lot of the weight off the volume column. And 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 because and just because we're doing something where we're swapping tokens or we're doing something like that on a contract level, it, it takes the pressure off volume and and creates additional obfuscation layers on the um on the platform. That's really interesting. I mean that. The ability to take ETH and then send it and say you want it delivered in Bermuda or delivered in whatever, I think is very useful for many people. Or if yeah. you have if you have some of these smaller altcoins and you're looking to pay for something or pay for a service or whatever, the ability to then, all right, I'll send my Floki and I'll automatically convert it to Ethereum and give the guy Ethereum. That way he doesn't that's, have to worry about exactly right. having it in his wallet, swapping it for Ethereum or anything like that, and incurring all those fees. 
and that's the thing as well, like we're providing options. So at present, for example, as well, unlike having your tokens in MetaMask, for example, and always having to have ETH in your wallet to, to be able to pay gas, for example, um, Bermuda gives you a couple of options there. So um, you can pay the gas in, if you have ETH, Ethereum in your Bermuda account, then you can pay the gas in Ethereum if you want to. But by default, what we actually do is allow the user to pay gas in whatever the the, the native token that's being interacted with is. So if I'm sending um, Shiba, for example, um, I can actually pay the gas in Shiba so I don't have to have an Ethereum balance in my wallet. Right. So it's, that's really nice it makes, too. Yeah, it just makes it more convenient for users, but they have the option of, of paying in Ethereum if they want to. Um, if you pay in Ethereum, the gas is a little bit cheaper, but as I said, it's, it's you, you know, there's a small, small, tiny cost that you pay and it's not us charging it. It's just because Every... we have to convert it for them. But right. um Everybody's so been in that situation where your ETH or your BNB balance runs to zero or your Juno swap, your Juno balance runs to zero. And you're like, well, I want the transaction to go through. And you got to figure out, all right, now how am I going to get some Ethereum moved to this wallet to be able to do these transactions? So having yeah. that feature is pretty nice. The, the other big thing that we're releasing is we're creating a system where... And this is this this operates actually quite similar to the way that centralized exchange is doing it. We're just doing it on a DEX level, on a on a decentralized exchange level, which I don't know of any other project that's doing this in DeFi. Um, what we're doing is that we we're having a system where if you have a Bermuda account, the um, Bermuda will give the option of actually going and creating um, a bridging wallet address for you. And so it means that every unique um, account within Bermuda can have in turn their own unique wallet address. And so essentially what that means that you can do is that from a centralized exchange or any point whatsoever in crypto, you have your own wallet address that you can send funds directly to. So rather than having deposit through the Bermuda workflow, you, you have an external wallet that you can send funds to from anywhere, from a centralized exchange or anywhere that you'd like. Bermuda will, every time you log in, Bermuda will scan that wallet. And if it, if it detects that any funds have been added into that wallet for you, it will automatically import them into your Bermuda account. So it, again, it creates another layer of privacy that you don't have to connect your own personal wallet to Bermuda in order to get funds into the system that's great it can literally be from any source whatsoever whether it be a centralized exchange or other dexes or um, any other kind and it also allows us the ability to be able to open the system up to integrations with other projects for example so we're in uh, discussions with shido about how we can leverage some of and shido is a support, supported token for us as well but we're in discussions with shido at the moment about how we can leverage some of their technology stack to benefit both the projects so shido do some really cool things um, and it ties into some of our future plans where um, in the future, which this isn't getting released in March, it'll, it'll probably be another couple of months before before this is this is released because there's quite a bit of work involved in it. But um, we are actively looking at cross-chain bridges, for example, and we're also looking at fiat on ramps. So essentially what that would mean is that you can pay from fiat or from a, a MasterCard or whatever you like whatsoever, any kind of um, you know real world cash um, scenario and buy tokens that get immediately injected into your Bermuda wallet. So there's literally no trace of how those tokens went in there. Um, they're in your Bermuda wallet, and then you can operate within the Bermuda ecosystem on a long-term basis while always having that level of anonymity. Right. That's that's awesome. So it sounds like you guys right now kind of have uh, an app that has a cool feature, uh, the mixing feature, but you guys are quickly within the next month or so going to be adding a lot of different features and the, the swap features and this ecosystem really creates around Bermuda. So I guess going to that, what are the current utilities for the BMDA token? And then what are the future utilities for the BMDA token? Like why do people want want or need to hold this token? Um, and uh, yeah, so that's, that's really my thoughts. I know there's a couple that we kind of discussed where there's a baseline number of tokens that you can hold to get uh, free usage of the current product. And I'm assuming future products and then I also know there is a deflationary system where, you know, essentially somebody holding tokens, the total supply of tokens is going to continue to decrease, which in theory, supply and demand should kick in and you got a, yeah. a bigger, bigger piece of the pie there. Look, definitely. So at present, I mean, we we always knew that there was going to, we wanted to have a lot of utility around the token. Um, as, as you pointed out, at present, the utility greatly relies around free use of the app, the, the app without incurring that service fee. And just touching on that service fee, as I said, it's, it's a 2.5% service fee if you use the app without having the BMDA tokens. That 2.5%... Two, um, it's 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 in in a week or two it's changing towards a model where 
basically 0.5% of that service fee, we'll do a chart buy on BMDA and then buy and, and then burn that immediately. So it's a buyback That's and burn awesome. mechanism that happens on a web three layer. So every time that someone uses the the app without and they're not a holder, it benefits anyone who is a holder. Uh, 1% goes to our development wallet, which basically just continues to help fund the project. And then the other 1%, what we're going to do with that is whatever token was interacted with. So for example, if 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 you're a, a Shiba or a Shido or a, let's, let's pick Vault. If you're a Vault holder, right? And, and you like supporting that project. For anyone that's interacting with Vault and they don't have that that thousand dollars worth of BMDA, one percent of that service fee will do a buyback and burn on whatever token was interacted wow, with. That's interesting. So we, we're actually supporting the projects that are listed with us as well, and that's one of the big benefits of of these projects that are coming on board and partnering with us. That we're actively supporting those projects on an ongoing basis by way of that that buyback and burn. And kind as of- I said. That kind of goes back to the user acquisition strategy because then that project has a a working reason to try to incentivize the community to go over there and actually utilize your platform. And whether that's, or not they want to yeah. get the BMDA token, that's on them. But if they don't, then that underlying project greatly benefits outside of just another integration. That's exactly right. You're either yeah, it's and and that's the thing that we've kind of looked at building with the with the platform. No matter what way, as soon as someone uses the platform, they're either supporting BMDA or they're supporting BMDA plus they're supporting the token that they're interacting with as well. So we see that as quite a, an important thing, and it's certainly something that a lot of the projects coming on board have been quite excited about because they can kind of see how long term how that that benefits not just users but the project itself. So. That's that's kind of what's happening at present um, with the BMDA token. One of the big things that we're looking at introducing in the future and, and one of the real kind of driving factors behind us releasing the BMDA token is that we're going to be moving to a DAO governance structure. And so essentially what that will mean is that the holders of BMDA will be able to um, for example, vote on what tokens that we choose to support in the future. So if we have projects that want to work with us, that'll be put forward as a proposal. And then BMDA holders will be able to vote on whether or not those projects should be included and supported within the BMDA protocol. So moving towards a DAO governance structure um, was something that was very important to us. And, and having our own native token is, is the easiest way to be able to support that kind of model. As I said, this is really a community-driven pros, um, project. And so That'll also tie into our own functionality that we release in the future, where we can basically workshop that with our community and discuss and say, hey, look, this is what we, this is the direction we'd like to move the project in, or this is how, this is the functionality that we're thinking about working on. We're going to let you guys have your say on it. We're going to let you vote on it and and, and ultimately let you guys decide whether or not we, that's something that we choose to prioritize right. or, or include in latest I mean, releases. I think that's kind of important to have a DAO structure for a privacy project. So I mean, look, everything looks great. You guys have a working product right now. You have a, a t- call to action. You have a BMDA token where, hey, guys, if you want $1,000 with the BMDA token in your wallet, you get to use the application for free. You get to use the, the future products for free. If not, uh, then you were incur some fees, but that just benefits uh, the BMDA token holders even more. And if you're a holder now, you can look forward to a governance tier in which if you hold enough BMDA tokens, you can be part of the DAO to kind of really chart the path and the journey of which Bermuda is going to take. Is there anything that we kind of missed here in in this brief conversation uh, that you you think is really important for uh, the listeners to hear and uh, to get them jump started with uh, Bermuda? Of course, in the description below, I will have the Bermuda website, their Twitter, all their links. Um, I'm looking at the website right now. It's super simple, guys. You hit launch app. There's a how it works video. You follow along and you can get started with uh, shielding shielding your your transactions and bringing privacy back to life uh, within the crypto space. Yeah, the the one thing that I would that the the one other thing that I would mention is just um, obviously we're we're undocked on this project, um, uh, which as you can understand, I think most people understand why being a privacy based project we, we're obviously private ourselves. Um, we are quite an established team. This is our our fourth project that we've launched over the last four and a half to five years. Uh, the other three projects are still quite successfully running. Um, obviously. With something like this, with any kind of privacy project, there's obviously that level of of trust that needs to be implemented in using this kind of service. And so that's something that's obviously quite important to us. And we want to make sure, try and distill that trust as much as we can with our, our holders and investors and, and people that use our at the, the app as well. And so one of the things that we're looking at at the moment is we're gearing up to make an investment with um, engaging with one of the top tier um, auditing companies. It's either going to be Hacken or Surtech. We're still having a conversation with, with both of those companies to work out who's going to be the best fit for us. 
Um, and they're basically going to be coming on board on a long-term retainer with us. It's it's not going to be a one-time um, use with them. We're actually going to look at an ongoing retainer where we engage them over the next six to 12 months. Um, and essentially what they're going to be doing is full code base auditing, contract auditing, security testing, pen testing. Um, and as I said, continuing to work with us on an ongoing basis as we continue to re release updates and whatnot. And we want to do that from the perspective of just really instilling that user confidence in the system. Um, as part of that project, there's a lot of a process, as a lot of people would know, we also have to KYC with them as well so that people have confidence that even though we're not doxxed, we have doxxed ourselves to one of those two providers. Mm -hmm. So they know who we are. They do background check checks on us and make sure that, um, you know, we obviously are trustworthy and whatnot. They don't, the, the, the benefit of engaging with these top tier companies is they typically don't work with people that are, um, either bad actors or untoward right. in the community. So um, as I said, we will go through that KYC process with them and they will be auditing and, and basically micromanaging anything that we release or anything that we do to really instill that um, that user trust. Um, and obviously, as I said, they they put out their they put out their reports and all of their findings. So it's publicly available whether or not there's any issues with their system, how that we've built things. I mean for for internal purpose of certain and for I suppose for ease of peace of mind for for most of our users, everything that we do, like our contract, our wallet, that's all locked away in a KMS vault that not even our internal team have access to. So we physically can't access users' funds or anything like that that's stored within the contract. But it's it's obviously one thing for us to say that and communicate that. It's right. another thing for a company like Hacken or Surtech to actually have that in report that. and say exactly to actually confirm that and say, no, you know, this team, they're doing things the right way. Um, and it is it is secure, that's so that's awesome. that's something that's that's something that's very important to us, and and something that we're just about to start embark on that process with with either Hacken or Surtech over the next week or so. Perfect. Well, I, I'm excited to learn about Bermuda on the ground floor. I think your market cap right now is somewhere around a, only a million bucks, guys. Uh, I'm excited uh, to own. I do own BMDA token. I enough of it to get the uh, free usage of your product, and I will be using this product and, and validating the product by giving away. 1000 BMDA tokens in order for your chance to win 500 simply like subscribe and leave a comment in the comment section below with your ERC 20 wallet. And the other way is if you're a current or new patreon.com slash learn crypto member, you will have another chance to win 500 BMDA tokens to get you well on your way to get a thousand dollars worth of tokens in order to use this awesome product for free. Uh, Mr. Black, thank you. I hope to have you on. I hope to see the progress and follow along the progress and the journey of this project here on this channel, on my Twitter, on my socials. And guys, once again, in the description below, we'll have all of the necessary links to get you started on your Bermuda journey. Do you have anything, final thoughts? Yeah, no, look, just again, I just wanted to say thank you for, for having me on today, Nick. I mean, one of the things that we're, we're obviously very I suppose, particular about the the different communities that we engage with. Um, and I suppose for your own listeners and community, um, you, you were certainly someone that we saw as you, you're not just a shiller. You're not just someone who, you know, jumps on and, and gets paid to do things. And just so everybody's aware, we haven't paid Nick at all for this. This is um, purely just something he wanted to have a chat with us. And the reason that we wanted to, we were quite keen to speak to Nick is because we know he has quite a, 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 a a very real community backing him um and so it was certainly something that we're we're delighted to be a part of and and, and again we just thank you for that opportunity for inviting us to um to come on board and, and share some news with you awesome i appreciate that yeah try to you know your reputation is the biggest thing in the crypto space and really in any investment space so i try to uh kind of stick by that if you notice with youtube we really haven't done any review videos or interview videos for the duration of the bear market just because there was nothing really calling to action. I didn't see an opportunity there and uh, there wasn't much going on. So now that things have kind of turned, there's some new products that look good, uh, that, that have real utility in the space and that have a reason for me to want to use them uh, is why we're trying to get in on some of these new projects on the ground floor. And hopefully Bermuda is one that has some great success. So until next time, guys, make sure to hit that like, share and subscribe button. And we will see you right here at Learn Crypto. Thanks, guys. Bye. On January 19, we released version 1 of the Bermuda Privacy Wallet that lets you hold and send tokens privately. Now we're about to dramatically increase your power to operate with anonymity on Ethereum. In our next release, you will be able to trade ERC-20 tokens. That means buy, swap, or sell inside your Bermuda Wallet, keeping your trades secret.
Every buy you make, every sell you make, all the tokens you hold will leave no identifiable trace. You'll even be able to swap and send tokens on the fly. Just select the token you want to send out and Bermuda performs the sleight of hand for you. Bermuda will now support our Ethereum DeFi partners by using part of our service fee to buy back and burn their tokens when you send them. When you use Bermuda, no one knows what you hold. No one will know what you buy or sell. No one will see your wallet when you make a payment or send tokens. And we will support your favorite Ethereum DeFi projects with buyback and burns.